For centuries, Yetis have been cloaked in mystery and intrigue. The Yeti, also known as the Abominable Snowman, is an elusive creature that is said to inhabit the vast, unexplored regions of the Himalayas and Siberia. Sightings of Yeti are rare and few, but those who claim to have seen them describe them as bipedal humanoids covered with thick fur that stands taller than most humans. Many believe Yeti to be an elusive species of large ape, or some even speculate them to be the lost descendants of the humans called Neanderthals. Yet no solid documented evidence has ever been presented in support of this theory in mainstream media. What if I told you that they once lived amongst us here in Mongolia? They called it Almas and it was even captured by the locals. Let's go through those astonishing and legendary experiences and we'll reveal the most compelling of them, which involves one of the creatures actually having babies with humans. What is Almas? The word Almas means one in Mongolian. Almas seems to be more comparable to wild humans than apes. The unknown hominids believed to exist in Central Asia, Russia, and the Caucasus. The first Almas was discovered in Kazakhstan according to various claims. Some depictions of Almas make them look humanoid, bipedal beings with reddish-brown hair, flat noses, small chins, and a dense brow ridge. Their height is known to be that of between five and six and a half feet. Many researchers in the field of cryptozoology are surprised by the significant similarities between the old narratives and modern conceptions of what Almas would have looked like. The anthropological findings and the native traditions that date back hundreds of years have all given birth to a narrative that almost are not merely fictional entities. Our research here is based on The Field Guide to Bigfoot and Other Mystery Primates by Lauren Coleman and Patrick Heige. Local legend narratives that extend back hundreds of years significantly describe Almas' appearance and their interactions with humans. Almas also appeared in Tibetan medical literature that was written centuries ago. An anthropologist from the United Kingdom, Mira Shackley, stated that there are a large number of illustrations in books for reptiles, mammals, and amphibians. However, there is not a single illustration of this mythological animal. Here are some interesting stories about Almas. The earliest writings in this regard were done in the 15th century. Around 1430, a traveler and a writer from Germany traveled across Siberia documenting every single thing that he saw and astonished him. He recorded one of the first European sightings of the Perswalski horse and reached Mongolia where he was captured by the Mongolian Khan and eventually served as his loyal servant. Hans had documented sightings of tall creatures standing erect and stalking him while making his way through the jungles. Nikolai Perswalski made a trip to Mongolia in 1871 in order to do research on the local fauna. He noted that Almas is documented in Mongolian and Tibetan apothecaries in addition to thousands of other living creatures and plants that we know today, which means they must have known something about it in order to have details about Almas and their apothecary. A little Almas girl, only seven years old, was murdered in Gobi with a crossbow when she hunted an animal. The villagers in that region stopped the investigation of the case since animal hunting with crossbows was against the law. In 1927, a group of pilgrims abandoned their caravan to rescue a lost camel. At dawn, they returned and found a number of Almas huddled around the smoldering remnants of the campfire. Frightened pilgrims waited until the scene was clear and found that they had nibbled some of the chocolates and dried dates, but seemingly did not touch the wine. In 1930, a monk named Damba Yoren was making his way through the Gobi when he caught sight of a youngster from a distance who was completely unclothed. He approached it, saw that it was covered in red hair. The monk ran away in panic, realizing that it was a wild, bewildering creature. In 1937, a whole Alma skin was reportedly displayed in the monastery's temple in Barun Haral, Mongolia. It walked on two legs, had arms, and a head full of long hair. Nagmet a Mongolian pharmacist and two Kazakhs were hiking in the highlands when they saw an Almas. They yelled at it and tried to entice it with food and clothing, but it eluded them into the thick jungle. In 1963, Ivan Ivlov was visiting the Altai Mountains in western Mongolia when he came across a group of three Almas, a male, a female, and a small boy. He used binoculars to watch them from a distance until they disappeared. Ivan Ivlov's observations made in 1963 of an entire Almas family living its entirety was fully corroborated by interviewing a handful of young Mongolian patients. To his surprise, he discovered that some of them had also met Almas. We've seen people recording incidences and sightings of Almas or wild humanoid beasts. Now let's get to the story of one which was captured and coexisted with humans. 
experts believing the wandering wild women was found lurking in the remote regions of Akamir in the Republic of Abkhazia. She was captured by a local merchant in the 1850s who hired a group of hunters to subdue and shackle her in the mountainous terrain. Professor Sykes claims Zana, the name locals gave her, was kept in a ditch surrounded by sharpened spikes and sold from owner to owner. Some people have speculated that she may have been an Almas, but there is no concrete evidence to support this claim. Her resemblance was that of a wild beast, the most frightening feature of which was her expression which was pure animal, one Russian zoologist wrote. The man who organized various eyewitness accounts of Zana wrote, her athletic power was enormous. She would outrun a horse and swim across the Moscow River even when it rose in violent high tide. She would carry stuff uphill, which would usually require five to 10 strong men to do it. She lifted logs like twigs and she was taken captive in the highlands in 1850. And despite of the fact that she displayed aggressive behavior, over time, she became domesticated and even assisted people for housekeeping. It is said that Zana was sexually harassed by one local resident, Egdi Ganaba, and gave birth to children who were normal humans. She then later had babies with other residents. Several of these newborns did not make it though and died early. Some researchers have hypothesized that Zana's genetically incapable, as an almas, with humans, may have been a contributing factor in this tragedy. During this time, the biological father put four of his surviving children with families from the neighborhood. All four of the children, when they reached adulthood, became valuable contributors to their community. Two boys, Dezanda and Kowit, born in 1878 and 1884, respectively, and two girls, Kodzanar and Gamasa, born in 1880 and 1882, respectively, married and began their own families. Zana died in 1890. Dr. Grover Krantz conducted research on the skull of Kowit, also known as Kavit, in the early 1990s. The skull is still present today. He came to the conclusion that there are absolutely no remnants of Neanderthal influence, that it was entirely modern. In the year 2008, the television show Monster Quest featured scientists conducting research on the tooth of Kowit. Unfortunately, DNA testing was not successful in providing conclusive evidence regarding Kowit's parents. Should you believe in Almas or not? Well, the theories about Almas are diverse, but there are accounts which are surely interesting. Another researcher, Lauren Coleman, has argued that the Almas are truly Homo erectus, while two other researchers, Mira Shackley and Bernard Huvelmans, have hypothesized that Almas is a residual population of Neanderthals. Others claim that they have a connection to the fabled Yeti of the Himalayas despite the fact that some of them disavow any humanoid origin. Another theory postulates that cryptids with human characteristics are actually people who have been socially stigmatized due to physical or mental abnormalities they were born with. This theory is similar to the first theory in that it postulates that cryptids with human characteristics are actually people. Whether Almas existed or not, it's not a question with a definite answer. We presented you the known documented story of one, which spun our heads and brought us to the edge of our seat. I have provided links to the articles in the description below. If you want to know more about Zana or the Almas, let us know what you think about this incident in the comments. And please do like the video if you found this interesting. Until next time.